Welcome everyone to ND Excellence, or NDX for short. I am the Hipster Snack, and this is a new side project wherein I will talk about indie games in brief. Rather than quibble over whether something is sufficiently obscure or not, here the only thing that means you'll qualify is if the game is independently developed. Now, admittedly, that's a pretty broad net to cast, as anyone without a publisher will technically qualify, but I'll try to maintain that theme of giving love to the little-known guys first and foremost. Today, I want to talk about the indie title Celeste, available for play on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and all PC operating systems, initially released January of 2018. You should seriously consider picking it up if you have any love of platformers in you. It chronicles the tales of Madeline, a spunky red-haired girl with a vertical leap that's out of this world, attempting to climb Celeste Mountain, not to be confused with the actual real-world Mount Celeste. This mountain is strongly associated with magical happenings and self-reflections. While unwilling to tell the first NPC she meets, Madeline becomes friendlier with the residents of the mountain as she scales it and faces ever greater challenges. And I'll come back to the story here in just a minute. First of all, let's talk about the aesthetics. The game looks great, but the sprite work appears minimalist at first glance up until you realize just how many sprites are actually in every animation. And for a game about mountain climbing, you can bet your pixels there's a lot of variation for each map, indoors and outdoors alike. There's icy crags, massive cave systems, ancient ruins, even a resort hotel with a mild black mold problem. Is black mold supposed to have eyes? Anyway, the art and sprites are credited to three people, Amora Betsini, Pedro Medreos, and Gabby DeRienzo, and apologize because I probably butchered the pronunciation of those names. And the music is absolutely gorgeous. There is not a single track in this game that I don't love. It fits that mood perfectly, be it a hauntingly atmospheric trip through a snowy cliffside or a harrowing leap of fate between blocks over a windy crevasse. Music in the game is credited to just one composer, Lena Rayner, and I would dip my hat to you if I had hands. And if that isn't enough, the gameplay is just perfect. The game is credited with programmer Noel Berry, who clearly did a fantastic job in the game design compartment. This is reflected really well in that Madeline as a character only has three mechanics, all relating to movement, jumping, dashing, and climbing. But that's all this game needs to cook up some seriously challenging platforming puzzles. Better still, at no point did the game's difficulty make me call foul. The levels are well designed, and what you need to do should be obvious if you take the time to look around before leaping into it. I never felt like the game was being unfair. When I made a mistake, I felt like I had to own it. I was the one who screwed up, not the game. All the mechanics are explained, and usually you'll get a demo of how they work in a safe environment before encountering them in the do or die situations. There's no need to memorize every map, as the game relies on putting together skills and mechanics you've learned just by playing the game. There's no brute force repetition required here. However, it's important to note that the game is merciful, primarily focusing on single screen challenges, so even if you die, you rarely lose much progress. Not only is the game great if you're simply trying to play it front to back, it has entire additional layers over top that. By finding cassette tapes to unlock the B-side, or more difficult versions, of stages, or by besting those you can even try C-side, which are fiendishly clever iterations of shortened level designs. Or that each base level includes challenges in the form of collecting strawberries, which are usually placed such that you'll need to add an additional step or challenge to the level in order to collect them. Winged strawberries enter the equation, forcing you to move with caution, as they'll fly off the screen if you use your dash. And to top it all off, there's a Tough as Nails post-credits area unlocked with crystal items. But I'll be honest, I'm not quite hardcore enough for this, and I've only ever found a couple of the crystals required to even begin the task. I got a decently good ending, and that was good enough for me, even after it took 8 hours of Steam's game time clock as any indication. The really incredible thing about it is not only is the gameplay engaging and addictive, constantly invoking that old school, maybe I'll do just one more level kind of mentality, the storytelling's really good, particularly warming up around the time Madeline first meets Theo. Theo's gimmick is being a total bro, and he is hands down my favorite character in the game. Between his and other NPC interactions, we learn that Madeline struggles with what might well be clinical depression, her challenge to top the mountain evidence of some level of self-worth. This is one of those instances where the game handles the topic of psychological illness really well, being both tactful in its presentation, but also bringing solutions to the table. Characters give Madeline advice and encouragement as she presses ever closer to the summit. 
And in a master stroke, the game introduces situational, I suppose you might call them boss encounters, but you don't fight them so much as avoid them. Predominantly among them being the dark tinted version of Madeline, sometimes called Badeline, who you will have to evade to make progress, as she uses a similar skill set to your own, clearly a representation of her own innermost doubts and feelings. Honestly, Celeste is an example of taking a very simple idea and making a very robust game out of it, both story and gameplay wise. If you said it's a game about jumping, well, you'd technically be right, if a bit reductive. But it's also a story about friendship, coming to terms with the past, whatever that might entail. It uses simple art to effectively illustrate a vast, mountainous terrain and simple melodies to underscore each region of the mountain. Simple mechanics to create devilishly challenging platformer and treasure hunting segments. Credited with direction, design, and writing, Matt Thorson has led an amazing team to create an incredibly robust indie title that has gone on to be nominated for and even win many game awards across 2018 and 2019, and it's totally obvious to me why. Celeste is a game that has a lot of heart and soul, found on its writing, its aesthetics, and its gameplay. I don't think I've ever found a game that looks so simple on the surface but just brimmed with such great design under that veneer. If anything I've said today piqued your curiosity, even in the slightest, you should absolutely get a copy and play it for yourself. If that's not motivation enough, the game is still undergoing development. As of writing this episode, there's a planned free DLC pack with a hundred additional all-new challenging levels planned for the near future. That should be all the motivation you should really need to pick up this wonderful game. And that's the final word on this bit of indie excellence. This has been The Hipster Snack, and if you liked what you heard or seen today, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to help the channel grow and be alerted to when new content goes live, be it obscure reviews or future NDX installments, hit the subscribe and bell icons. And if you want to ensure I can keep consistently bringing this content, you also have the option of becoming a patron of mine at Subscribestar. The link will be in the description. Join me next week, where you never know what we'll cover next, but I promise I'll see you there. I'm <laughs> sorry.